On Sunday, Wroxham play the biggest game in their history. They're at Wembley in the final of the FA Vars. It's every footballer's dream to play here. Wroxham's amateurs now have their chance. Wembley's pitch back to perfection, relayed for the tenth time in three years. The yachtsmen have breezed in. Now they're looking to soak up every minute. The more people to come and support us, the better. So Norwich fans, come along and join us in uh, our celebration. Um, well, how full do you think the stadium's going to be, Martin? I think we might struggle to fill it. What do you think? Well, I don't know. I've, I've heard a few um, Lowestoft fans are coming, coming down and hopefully a few dis, um, old old school dis town fans um, from where they go. But no, I think hopefully if we, if we sell both our um, allocation of tickets, there should be 13,000 if math, math serves me correctly. The prize, the FA Vars. The competition for them began last September. Twelve matches on, just Whitley Bay stand between Wroxham and Silverware. Whilst we've done remarkably well to get here, it's managers, players, coaches, fans, all over the country would chop their right arm to be in the position we're in, and we respect that. But at the same time, we've still got something to do. We haven't won it. Norwich have enjoyed that winning feeling all season. They'll lift the League One Championship trophy after tomorrow's home game with Carlisle. After that, they'll be rooting for their Norfolk friends. You don't want to go there and think it's a great day, great stadium, and end up losing. Because nobody will thank you for it. I mean, as long as they go and enjoy it, but I think the best bit of advice is just win it. Elsewhere tomorrow, Colchester, who missed out on the playoffs, finished their season at home to Leighton Orient. Relegated South End, who beat Stockport last week, courtesy of Alan McCormack's late goal, hoped to bow out on a high at Southampton. Tom Williams, BBC Look East. Now it's back to Stuart, who's in Lowestoft, part of the Waveney constituency, which the Tories won back last night. Yes, welcome back to the seafront in Lowestoft. We're at the Victoria Hotel, and as you can see, the sea is just behind us. Over this election campaign, we've heard a lot from the politicians. Tonight we'll hear for the last time during this election campaign from the voters. Mike Liggins has been out and about in Lowestoft with the voters and the park bench. What a lovely day to be by the seaside. Not if you Labour's Bob Blizzard, who lost his seat perhaps, but lovely all the same. So, what did Lowestoft voters make of the election result? Who did you vote for? I voted uh, Bob Blizzard for Labour. My only concern with the Conservatives is that you know, I lived through the Maggie age and I just really don't want to see that kind of um, don't care attitude back again. How did you vote? I voted Conservative. Why? Because I wanted to see the Labour Party put out. I've had enough of Labour. Why? Because of the things they're doing, uh, this immoral wars we're in. Well, I voted Labour for the first time. Yeah, and Brian? I voted Labour for the first time. The country's in trouble. I'm because I think Gordon Brown did a, a good job as Chancellor exactly. and a good job as a Prime Minister okay. for the state of the world. Mm. And there's a saying, may I say it, you can cut it out if you want to, the better the devil you know than the devil you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you vote for? I voted for the Labour Party. OK, why? Well, it was actually a tactical vote because I wanted there to be a balanced parliament. I did actually think and I hoped that we would get a Liberal Labour a coalition purely because I want electoral reform and I don't Well that think, could still happen. I don't think under the Conservatives we would get electoral reform. No. No. So what happens next? Well one thing is clear the election bench can now retire. It should be happy here by the seaside. But what happens if there's another election? Sadly retirement will have to wait. Well, I'm joined now by uh, one of the longest standing Liberal MPs in the country, Bob Russell from Colchester, and uh, Euro MP Richard Howitt. Thank you both for being with us here this evening. Of course, you're representing Labour. Who was most disappointed after last night? You, Bob, or you, Mr Howitt? Well, personally, I was delighted to get re-elected. Ah, uh, no, I mean, there's a party. Oh, the increased majority, increased vote, increased... Vote. I, I think around the country we were expecting more because that's what the opinion polls indicated, but, of course, that wonderful BBC exit poll indicated otherwise, and I said, no, that's not true, and it turned out to be true, and I think we need to ask... I think I know what happened, but to others more expert than I, no doubt, will have expert views. A very disappointing night for Labour, Richard Howard. 
Of course, but this was the election, frankly, that no one won. And no one today should write well, David off... David Cameron won. No, he didn't. Did he? No. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. Come on, but no gone. one should write off Labour in the east of England. Three cheers for Luton. Result of the night, Gavin Shuker, Kelvin Hopkins, 7,000 majority. Yeah, but those are the only two seats that you have yeah, in but, this region. Yeah, but look at the council results we've had today. Here in Waveney, we've, we've made four gains in Ipswich, two in Harlow, four. And we have lost good MPs. But you're, but telling, you're, telling, you're not telling me that you would rather have those council seats than the city. No, and I'm very MPs. sorry that we've got really good MPs like Bob here. Uh, uh, Bob Blizzard here, oh, who's lost. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and what I would say, a majority here of 700 a majority of 300 in Charles Clark's seat in Norwich South, if there is a quick second election, Labour's going to be coming back and fighting very hard to win back these so seats. Uh, uh, I mean, you're going to be one of those flirtatious Liberals now, are you, Bob? Well, yourself? not necessarily. Uh, clearly, the electoral system is corrupt if we have a system where the, there's no Labour MPs in Essex, Suffolk, Norfolk and Cambridgeshire, and that the nearest Labour MP for me... MP for me is in 60 miles away in London. Liberal Democrats are now the uh, second party of the East of England. We've got twice as many seats uh, as Labour. But seriously, so gonna, uh, I mean, your leader was saying he wouldn't have Gordon Brown squatting in number 10. Are you going to support him if he? Well, we, we, the parliamentary party will be meeting o over the weekend. But we need Go on, to tell me yes or no. No, 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 no. Seriously, we parliamentary party will take soundings. We will discuss it. But we have to acknowledge the electoral system is wrong. And I think one of the reasons why Liberal Democrats didn't tra translate that uh, opinion polls in, into MPs is because of the way the Tory national press. Thank I'm goodness gonna, for and, regional and I'm gonna ask you. I'm going to ask you yeah. both short yeah. answers. Will there be another election within six months, do you think, Richard Howard? I think that there is a sporting chance that we will get a stable government without a second election. Okay. And being in, the, being in the European Parliament, we have nothing to fear Bob with Russell. parties there'll working a, together. I believe there will be a second election between six and 18 months. In other words, not this side okay. of October, but October this year to October next year. Thank you, both of you, for coming to being with us here this evening. From Lowestoft, back to you, Susie, in the studio. Thanks, Stuart. Our political correspondent, Andrew Sinclair, is here with me. Now, these results in this region take us back to the pre-1997 kind of true blue uh, Tory era, don't they? In one respect, yes. Uh, like the early 90s, we only have two Labour seats in the region. Unlike the early 90s, we now have the Liberal Democrats. Um, have a look at the regional share of the vote. The Conservatives way ahead, of course, but the Lib Dems are now in second place. They've got more votes than Labour and they have more seats than Labour. Ever so slowly, we're becoming a Liberal Democrat region and that's going to make it much harder for Labour in the future to win those seats back. While I'm at it, let me just show you what's happened to the minor parties. And look at that. The BNP is now more popular than the Green Party. In 2005, it got 0.2% of the vote. Now it's scoring 2%. The Green share of the vote, despite all their efforts, has only increased by half a percent this time. The Greens will find that very disappointing. Many people will find that quite worrying. And I guess if, if the Tories do form a government, we're going to have some big hitters probably in this region, aren't we? A lot. Great. Let's get the weather with Phil. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. Well, after a dry week, I'm afraid it's a case of uh, rain. For now, a reminder that there will be an extended local bulletin after the 10 o'clock news tonight. But from all of us here, at the end of this dramatic day, have a good evening. Goodbye. Nick Hancock is Friday.